In this exploration, we will traverse the vast seas of time, charting the remarkable evolution of naval aviation from one aircraft carrier to another. As we ascend to the skies and plunge into the depths of this captivating evolution that has fundamentally reshaped the dynamics of global maritime power projection, prepare to set yourself, secure your safety harness, and brace yourself for a thrilling expedition through the ages. But before we explore, smash the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Aircraft carriers are crucial in a nation's military arsenal due to their ability to establish mobile military air bases close to any coastline globally, a privilege granted under international law within a 14-mile radius. With 19 operational aircraft carriers worldwide, the United States leads the pack, while countries like China, Thailand, India, Russia, France, and Italy maintain one or two carriers. These towering structures require a workforce of over 6,000 personnel and can remain operational for extended periods, serving as self-sustaining metropolises on the open ocean. Aircraft carriers such as the Charles de Gaulle can launch aircraft swiftly, sometimes surpassing the efficiency of bustling airports. To counteract their vulnerability in hostile waters, carrier invariably navigates in the company of formidable strike groups. These groups typically comprise cruisers, destroyers, submarines, and supply vessels, offering a shield of protection and bolstering the carrier's overall combat potential. An aircraft carrier serves as the central hub of a strike group, boasting a command center with a bridge and air traffic control facilities. Additionally, it houses a flag bridge, where an admiral oversees the operations of the entire strike group. Each vessel within the group plays a dual role, contributing both offensive and defensive capabilities. The lone exception to this rule is the supply ship, which primarily focuses on logistics and support functions. All 11 American airlines and the French Charles de Gaulle are nuclear-powered, enabling them to keep going for up to 25 years without refueling. While traditionally powered ships may cruise up to 12,000 miles without refueling, such as the UK's HMS Queen Elizabeth, which lessens the requirement for frequent landings. Given their increased operational range, carriers need more nourishment and gasoline for long periods at sea. To maintain efficiency and reduce fragility, they resupply while at sea to avoid making frequent port trips during battle operations. Strike Group Supply Ship travels to a neighboring port and returns with fuel, ammo, food, and mail alongside the carrier. Transferring aviation fuel is done over lines while moving solid supplies is done by connecting pallets to dollies or using helicopters. Additionally, American aircraft carriers have postal addresses that enable families to send mail at the exact cost of mailing it to any other U.S. address, wherever the carrier may be. Sailors can place online orders for packages to be delivered to their ships. Expedited mail frequently travels from a U.S. location to a carrier navigating global waters in just 10 days. Achieving this level of speed necessitates for more frequent deliveries compared to those of logistics ships. Fortunately, carriers serve as sea-based airports, offering a convenient solution. American carriers currently employ a C-2 Greyhound cargo aircraft fleet to maintain a high-frequency connection between carriers and the mainland, often with daily flights. For instance, while sailing in the Mediterranean Sea, as the USS Eisenhower did in June 2019, Correspondence could be dispatched to Italy through conventional channels. A C-2 Greyhound would subsequently take off from the vessel to Italy, collect the post, and return to the ship. As aircraft carriers navigate global waters, the drop-off spots for the C-2 Greyhounds are constantly adjusted to neighboring allied countries. Despite its positive impact on boosting crew spirits, it's important to note that mail is considered the least critical cargo for the C-2 Greyhounds. These aircrafts play a vital role in the carrier's operations by facilitating the transportation of essential spare parts required to maintain the carrier's aircrafts. Moreover, they serve as a crucial means of transporting VIPs, members of the press, and other individuals to and from the carriers, ensuring the efficient functioning and support of these naval vessels. The C-2 Greyhound is relatively substantial in size, and similar in dimensions to a civilian aircraft like the Embraer 145, 
which can transport up to 50 passengers. It's worth noting that even the world's largest and most modern aircraft carrier, the USS Gerald R. Ford, is only 1,106 feet or 337 meters long. In commercial aviation, it's common to find runways that stretch to around 5,000 feet or 1,500 meters in length. For example, London City Airport in London features a runway size that is categorized as relatively short. On the other hand, major international airports like London Heathrow typically boast runways that exceed 10,000 feet or 3,000 meters in length. Now, when it comes to aircraft operating on carriers, such as the C-2 Greyhounds, they face a unique challenge. Carriers provide considerably shorter runways, measuring only 1,100 feet or 330 meters long. These aircrafts execute short takeoffs to meet this challenge, ascending into the skies with a remarkably minimal distance of just 325 feet or 99 meters of available runway. The launch systems employed by U.S. and French aircraft carriers rely on catapults to swiftly accelerate their planes to take off speed, achieving this feat in just 3 to 4 seconds. This advanced technology empowers these carriers to launch even moderately sized aircraft, such as the C-2 Greyhound, from their comparably compact flight decks. In contrast, carriers from nations like China and India lack these catapult systems. Consequently, they are limited to deploying lighter and shorter range aircraft that can manage takeoff from a much shorter runway due to this technological constraint. Both these categories of carriers, whether equipped with catapults or not, employ arrestor wires as critical component in their landing systems. These arrestor wires serve as crucial safety mechanisms, allowing aircraft to safely decelerate upon landing with the limited deck length available on these carriers. In contrast to most aircraft carriers, which require aircraft capable of vertical landing, American carriers have a well-organized system on their flight decks where each person's role is distinguishable by the color of their shirt. Yellow-shirted personnel handle the task of guiding aircraft on the deck. At the same time, blue-shirted individuals assist the yellow shirts by operating tug elevators, delivering messages, and performing various other duties in a carefully orchestrated and seemingly chaotic environment. Red shirts are responsible for the handling and installation of ammunition. Purple shirts oversee aircraft refueling operations. Various groups wear green shirts, including catapult crews, maintenance personnel, cargo handlers, and others. Different personnel also wear white shirts, including those assisting with aircraft landings and medical personnel. Lastly, brown shirts are worn by plane captains who are responsible for overseeing all tasks related to preparing an aircraft for flight without actually piloting it. Not all carrier planes can fit in the flight deck, which is a constraint and hazardous space. Aerial lifts move aircraft from the flying deck to the storage below where they are stored. Each American carrier employs roughly around 6,000 people, 3,200 of whom run the ship, including duties like managing the nuclear reactor, maintaining the engines, and cleaning the deck. Since many of these tasks are performed below deck, and much of the space above deck is occupied by flight operations, crew members may go days without seeing the sun. The carrier's aviation wing also has 2,500 men on board. If this were a bustling maritime port, you'd find a diverse range of professionals hard at work, including harbor masters, dock workers, ship engineers, crane operators, sailors, and various support staff, all contributing to the efficient operation of the port. The role of aircraft carriers in contemporary warfare has come under scrutiny since their heyday during World War II. While most nations with aircraft carriers primarily deploy them for combat, training, or station them at home, the United States stands out by employing its carriers for a fourth essential function, power projection. It's a strategy that sets the U.S. apart as an American carrier group is almost always operating somewhere in the world, ready to project military force and influence in various global hotspots. The absence of an American aircraft carrier on deployment in January 2017 marked a historic moment, as it was the first time since World War II that such a gap occurred. The versatility and speed of these carriers are notable attributes. These naval giants are incredibly swift, with a top speed of 35 miles or 56 kilometers per hour. The USS Ronald Reagan is stationed in Japan, 
giving the U.S. a substantial advantage in the Pacific and enabling it to reach North Korea in approximately 29 hours. American aircraft carriers frequently cruise the world's waters to display the strength of the U.S. military. The USS Ronald Reagan, for example, patrolled the South China Sea for most of its four-month deployment without engaging in conflict, which the U.S. was concerned about due to China's armed forces aspirations. Regular trips by American airlines to the Korean Peninsula also serve as a sign of their existence, with a significant uptick occurring in November 2017 during an increase in North Korean tensions. However, in an age with sophisticated drones and precision missiles, aircraft carriers are weak targets given their might. American naval forces frequently engage in joint military exercises alongside allied nations, simulating combat scenarios. Two noteworthy incidents in 2005 and 2015 involved Swedish and French submarines respectively, achieving victory in these simulated war games against U.S. aircraft carriers. In these instances, the submarines from Sweden and France successfully approached the American carriers closely enough to hypothetically launch torpedoes, potentially posing a significant threat to the carriers if they were adversaries in an actual combat situation. These incidents underscore that aircraft carriers, despite their formidable defensive capabilities, are not impervious to threats, as some might claim. Nevertheless, it's worth noting that nations like the United States, China, India, and the United Kingdom are investing in the construction and deployment of carriers. The U.S. has received the first of 10 carriers in a new class. This demonstrates a continued commitment to carrier-based naval power suggesting that despite the vulnerabilities highlighted in simulations, aircraft carriers are expected to remain a prominent presence in the world's oceans for the foreseeable future. In this journey through time and technology, we've discovered that aircraft carriers are not just symbols of military might. They are symbols of innovation, resilience, and adaptability. They are a testament to the dedication and expertise of the thousands of individuals who work tirelessly to ensure their success. And remember, if you enjoyed this, don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell for more fantastic upcoming videos.